Good afternoon, class. Today, I wanted to touch on a different topic and spark a conversation among us. I've been thinking a lot lately about gender identity and who we believe we are versus who we think we are. I'm gonna start off by explaining the definitions and differences between sex and gender. The dictionary definition of sex is either two of the main categories, male or female, into which humans and most organisms are divided on the basis of their reproductive functions. Gender is used to describe the characteristics of men and women that are socially constructed. When we come into this world, often our parents already know our sex and have picked out pink or blue paint for our nurseries. They pick out dolls for their daughters and monster trucks for their sons. They have their daughters wear skirts and dresses while their sons wear pants and shorts. Do any of you see the issue here? Gender is what is socially acceptable for each sex. If a boy wears a skirt, that's for girls and he shouldn't be wearing that and people will look at him weird. What if a girl decided not to shave her natural body hair and go to the beach? I'm 100% positive that people will look at her, make fun of her for not shaving. Psychologist and sexologist John Money came up with the idea of gender theory which is the study of what is understood as masculine, feminine, and or queer in any context. Our society has made us believe that these rules are true and anything outside of them is wrong and should be looked down upon. This does not only apply to appearance, but it affects people's mental and emotional health. Why are men ashamed when they cry? They are constantly told that it is not manly to show emotion and that they need to grow a pair and stop being so sensitive. It is supposedly a girl thing to show your emotions. When women are tough and speak their minds and show no indication as to what they're feeling, they're quickly called cold-hearted or a bitch. Through the 1960s and 70s, researchers turned more towards gender studies and analyzing when children recognize whether they are a boy or a girl and how it starts to change their perspective of things around them. In about their second year of life, Children already know the stereotypical differences between boys and girls and are able to identify themselves as one of the categories. This is when they start to recognize that the other gender may have cooties and tend to stay away from them. Meanwhile, their curiosity grows for their counterpart. Parents, of course, are entitled to raising their child in any way they feel is fit and will keep their child safe and happy. But sometimes, guardians can go to extreme lengths like forcing their sons to play football or shaming a little boy for crying about someone taking his toy. Why don't you just hit him back? Stop acting like a little girl. Even punishing a child for wanting to play with his sister's Barbies can be an issue in some households. These restrictions and constant punishments can snowball and cause children to grow up with mental illness and struggle with who they are. There are so many children and young adults who are afraid to tell their parents how they really feel, who they really love, or even what the constant abuse did to them. How are we gonna teach our future generations from both sexes to open up and be vulnerable whenever they feel like it, when one group is expected to do it and the other is scolded when they do? I'm a strong advocate for doing whatever makes you happy. And if happiness to you means something that is not considered normal and is unconventional, then by all means do it. As long as you are not hurting anyone else, do whatever you want. Why should we care about what others think of us? What, what are they gonna do for us? Why would some lady on the street that gives me a dirty look when I'm wearing dark makeup affect me? The issue is that we allow it. We allow other people's opinions and societal norms to make us conform and be just like everyone else. Especially in many countries including the United States, this is what they want. A bunch of little robots acting and doing the same thing, looking the same, etc. And then make it seem so taboo when there's perfectly fine people who are just not like everyone else and freely express themselves with no shame. A great example of this is in December 2020, singer Harry Styles appeared on the cover of Vogue wearing a dress. He was the first solo male ever to appear on the cover of Vogue, which is a huge accomplishment on its own. But critics completely bypassed this accomplishment and put him down by saying that men should not wear dresses. Candace Owens, a critic, 
although I secretly think she's a big fan. Responded to the magazine cover saying, bring back manly men. Bring back manly men. What I actually think she meant was, bring back toxic masculinity and insecurities. Harry Styles is a fashion icon and is a major inspiration for many clothing brands and people around the world. While it may work for him, it might not work for others, and that's completely fine. There's no problem with that. For so long, men had to be all big and bad and tell everyone else what to do, and women had to follow in their shadows and do every basic task for them. But this is no more. There's a lot of people that are not keeping up with the times. Racists, homophobes, sexists, and more need to realize it's different now. It's 2021. Those who say that men should not wear makeup because it's for women need to get over it. Gender is a spectrum. Some women may fall on the way more feminine side of the spectrum, wearing dresses, full faces of makeup, loving the color pink, and that makes them content. Other women may fall in the middle, jeans, t-shirts, minimal makeup, messy hair, and that's completely fine. Other women may fall on the completely other end of the scale, faded haircuts, tattoo sleeves, all around a more masculine look. And that's perfectly fine. All of these are scenarios, of course, and there are people that fall on different parts of the scale, not just these three sections. But the point is that these people are happy. People are free to do whatever they want and should no longer feel judged for doing something that they love. This also leads me into speaking about gender pronouns. Recently, there has been a lot more people wanting to refer, wanting others to refer to them as they, them, instead of she, her, or he, him. There's nothing wrong with this. These individuals simply do not consider themselves any specific gender and identify with all of it, some of it, or none at all. There is nothing wrong with identifying as your given gender or the opposite gender. For example, I identify as she, her. People have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As long as you're doing you and living your best life, no one can tell you anything. And you have the power to do whatever you want, no matter what society's rules are. Our world has shaped us into believing that a nine to five job is the only way you can be successful. Our generation has quickly realized that this is not the case and there are so many other ways to become successful. We're getting to a time where gender is not so important and parents are choosing gender neutral names and colors for their babies. As we shift into a new era, I wanna educate you all on what this all means and how it may affect you. Now students, please turn and talk to your partners and talk about some of the lecture points from today. We'll come back together and discuss it as a group.